We hope you enjoy today's message on Acts chapter 2 verse 38 preaching channel. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit the bell to help us grow. Thankful for everyone that is here and all of our guests. God bless you. Amen. Believe in God to do something beautiful. Anybody feel like God has talked to your heart? Anybody feel the presence of the Lord? Amen. And I am not going to preach long, but I am going to preach to us what God has laid in my heart. Jonah 1, verse number 1. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. So God calls Jonah, and gives him a mission, and sends him. God calls this man. But verse number three says, but Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish and he paid the fare thereof. Everybody say the fare. It's the price. He bought a ticket and he paid for it and went down into it to go with him unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. The next few verses, which I will not read, begins to uh, uh, recount the events that followed Jonah's disobedience of God and how he went unto a ship going the opposite direction, how a storm, a mighty tempest uh, hit that ship. It almost sank the boat. The people with him in the boat were almost, uh, almost lost. Finally, it came to the point, as you know, that they, they threw at Jonah's own request, they threw him overboard into the sea. It was there that uh, one of the most well-known stories in Bible begins or, or is continued that Jonah was swallowed by a great fish that was prepared by the Lord. And there for three days and three nights he stayed. To finish the cliff notes of the book of Jonah, Jonah is then by this fish deposited. That's a nice way of saying it, isn't it? Deposited. Uh, on dry land, and he goes and preaches to Nineveh and obeys the call of God, and a great, powerful revival breaks out, and he obeys God's call. But we read the text today where Jonah heard the call, and the Bible says that he disobeyed, took a ship to Tarshish, and he ran from the call and paid the price. I want to tell you, there's always a price from running for the call. There's a price. And that's what I'm going to preach today. You can either call it a ship to Tarshish, but I guess if you want a, a title, Brother Larry, let's call it the price of running from the call. Amen. We live in a, a world that is beset on all sides, but I'm going to tell you, the church still has a mission and still has a purpose. And there is a call that's here today. And I believe God wants us to hearken and hear the call that he has given us. Let's pray and ask that God would talk to us these next few minutes. Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for what you've already done. Move and minister. In Jesus' beautiful name we pray. And everyone said amen. And God bless you. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. As we read today, I, I, uh, I will not recount everything that uh, I already spoke about the book of Jonah. But I do want you to understand um, this, this story. And that is that this man Jonah that we first read about in 2 Kings, I believe it's chapter 14, verse 25, where he prophesies a good prophecy. God calls him to make a prophecy of blessing and expansion uh, to the nation of Israel. This man is called again in our text, in the call of God, the word of God came to him. And I want to begin by telling us today that the call of God 
is in this place today. Amen. How many believe that? I want to tell you that the call of God is speaking to every individual in this house. Children, young people, young men, young ladies, elders, young marrieds, whatever the case may be, God's call comes to everyone. And the question is, what will you do with the call? The call of God, it came to Adam and called him and said, where are you, Adam? And it came to Noah and told him to build an ark. It came to Moses and told him to deliver the people of Israel. The call of God was on every king that was really anointed of God. The call of God came to every prophet that would prophesy the word of the Lord. And I want to tell this church today, the call of God is in this house today. God's call is on this church, in this world, this 21st century. Today, right in the middle of California, here in the middle of the Inland Empire, one of the more densely populated parts of the world, in the middle of all of our news cycle and, and things that are happening, I want to tell this church that the call of God is still in this house today. And the call of God is on every individual in this place. It comes to everyone that is here. Is there anybody that would say, God, I want to hear and receive the call of God? Everybody's going to do something with the call. Everybody's going to either heed or deny the call. And We read about Jonah. The Bible says that this man, in this case, he did not hearken to the call. In fact, he did the opposite of what God asked him to do. He did not, he did not respond in the right way. He Instead of going to Nineveh, which was, if, per what I've read, about 550 miles uh, to the east, maybe a little bit north as well, this man jumped on a boat and went to Tarshish. There's some debate as to where Tarshish is. Most seem to think it's the southernmost part of Spain, about 2,500 miles west, and again, a little bit north of Joppa. So instead of going 500 miles that way, he went 500. 2,500 miles that way, 3,000 miles from the call of God. And uh, he, he went in the, the opposite direction. He was running from the presence of God. And I've, I've seen a lot of reaction to the call of God. I've seen people respond, but I've also seen a lot of people run from the presence of the Lord. And three times in this chapter, in this book, it says that Jonah, he ran from the presence of the Lord. Can I tell you today, you cannot run from the presence of God. I want to say that again. You cannot run from the presence of God. Psalm 139 and 7, the psalmist says, Whither shall I flee from thy, whither shall I go from thy presence? And whither shall I flee from thy presence? He says, if I go to heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in hell, you're there. I'm here to tell somebody today, God is calling everybody in this house. We are all called children and young men and young ladies and men and women and young marriage, as I mentioned, and elders. You are called of God. You cannot run from this call. And I, I'm going to tell you, sometimes when God has a call in your life and, and you're to do the work of God and even just being a part of the church, there is a pressure that comes from the call. There is a pressure that comes from the call. There is fear that comes from being involved in God's call. There is, there is stress and, and pressure. And the more you are involved in the call of God, and sometimes like the prodigal son, he was in the father's house, people will run from God's house to a far country. They'll buy a ticket like Jonah did. And, and I've seen and you've seen a lot of people buy a ticket, buy a fare, pay the fare to leave uh, God's presence to try to run. And there's a lot of ways, a lot of things that would qualify as, a, as an alternative to God's call. I've seen people try to indulge in entertainment to quiet the sound of the call of God and to the point where they, they're just trying to have fun and party it away. And it is just simply an escape. It's a price of running from the call. I've seen in some cases so drastic a measure where I've seen men that fell into immoral actions and affairs. And I've wondered in some cases, was it actually, was it the pressure of life that drove them to, to do this? And, and, uh, but they, they bought a ticket to Tarshish. And I've seen people get on a ship to Tarshish through false doctrine. 
They, they begin to believe a lie, and they ran in the opposite direction. I've seen people that just backslide entirely in drugs and alcohol. And I, I think of some young people I grew up with. I would never call their name, but one girl. It's, it's unbelievable how far she went and, and the situation that, that she, she died in. I never dreamed it would happen to her. I think of a young man that I preached in conferences with, and we preached together, and how far he went, and, and how uh, uh, in a, such an opposite direction from the call of God, he went the opposite direction. Can I tell you, that's not the answer to the call of God. The answer is not to run in an opposite direction. The answer is not to flee from God's purpose. The answer is not to put the church and the things of God on a shelf. The answer is to heed the call, to listen to the call, to respond to the call of God. Because I'm here to tell you this today, that there is a price for paying, uh, for running uh, from the call of God. There is a price that comes. Things only get worse. The Bible says in Jonah's time, there was a storm that came. And, and the storm almost took uh, Jonah down. And I want to tell some that may be looking for an escape from the call of God. You try to run from it. Uh, things will only get worse. And for Jonah, his, 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 that, that ship seemed awfully flimsy and flaky. But can I tell you, it looked awfully firm when he landed in that ocean. He passed from that semi-fluid, semi-solid foundation of the ship into the swirl of a sea at, at, uh, at storm. And, and he passed from the ship into a, and from the, to the sea and then from there into a fish or what the Bible even calls the belly of hell. I'm just here to preach to somebody today. There is nothing better than the call of God. The call of God is the answer. Responding to the call of God is the answer. Don't run from the call of God. Respond to the call of God. We're living in a crazy world. Listen now, it's turned inside out and upside down. The pressure's on some of you, but the answer is not to run from the call. The answer is not to, to escape. The answer is not to look for a ship to Tarshish. The answer is not to bail out. The answer is to say, God, I'm listening. God, I'm responding. I don't want the price of escape. I want to be everything that God wants me to be. And I'm here to tell you, the beauty of this is that God did call Jonah again. Anybody glad that God will call you and call you again? The voice of the call came, and, and I'm not going to preach much longer today, so I want you to listen fast. This is where we're at today. God called Jonah, and he called him to preach. And I, I'm talking to people today. God is calling you to tell people about this truth. It doesn't matter if there's a coronavirus. The call hasn't changed. It doesn't matter if the world gets inside out and upside down. The call hasn't changed. If the day ever comes that they take away our, our uh, uh, deal where you can get tax deduction for giving, uh, the call hasn't changed for you to tell people about Jesus. If the day ever comes the pressure so strong where we have to shut these, uh, the physically having a building, they take the building away. I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, it's happened in China. It's happened in other parts of the world. But that doesn't mean the call of God is silenced. Uh, if the day ever comes uh, where we are meeting in homes, uh, and I'm not prophesying sign or predicting that. The answer is still to respond to the call of God. The answer is still, it's time for revival. The answer is still, it's time for people to get the Holy Ghost. The answer is still for the people of God to be strong and steadfast and rooted and grounded. Don't back away. Don't run away. Love this truth. Be one God. Jesus name apostolic. Is there anybody that will hear the call today? Amen. Jonah's call came again, and it was a call to preach, and it was also a call to salvation. And I, I, I want our musicians to come. I told you I wasn't going to preach very long today, but I want to tell somebody in these last couple of minutes in this service, right now, today, on March, whatever, March, this day, March 15th, 2020, the call of God is still going forth. The purpose of God is still the same. The question is still, who can hear his voice? 
There's some of you in this house today, you don't have an assurance and a faith. Some of you are fearful and, and afraid. and You don't know what to do or where to turn. Can I tell you, God is calling for you today. The call in Isaiah 55 was this. It said, and it's still the call today, Ho, oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. He that hath no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. I'm here to tell you, God is still calling you to eat at his table. Matthew 11 and 28, if you're not saved today, Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I've come to preach, there's still rest in God's house. There's still peace in living for God. If you've never repented of your sins, if you've never been baptized in the name of Jesus, if you've never received the gift of the Holy Ghost, I've just made up my mind on March 15, 2020, in the middle of what's going on, to preach an Acts 2.38 message and preach the gospel. The call of God is going out today. The call of God when I was a child was Acts 2.38. The call of God last Sunday when I preached was Acts 2.38. And the call of God today is still repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This promise is unto you. You know what I've come to preach to this church? God is on the throne and in control. I've come to preach the call of God has not changed. I said it a minute ago. In fact, why don't you go ahead and stand today. I, I said it a minute ago when I was introducing Brother Brown for the teaching that our president has called the national state of emergency. And in our county, they have called a countywide state of emergency. Our state has called a statewide state of emergency. Our city has called a citywide state of emergency. But I'm here to preach to you today that while there are things going, this is nothing the Bible did not predict. God sees this. And if there ever was a time for the church to heed the call of God, to be sensitive to people that are hungry, I was talking to somebody this morning. They went to buy some, some groceries for, 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 for a church event for the Sunday school kids. There at that place, they met somebody, invited them to church. They're supposed to come to Spanish service. I'm just here to tell you, we are reaching for souls. Now, you may pray them through right there where they're at. You may teach them a Bible. Be sensitive. Listen, they're open. They're open. It's not time for the church to not be the church. This building is not the church. You're the church. I'm glad for this building, and we're still planning on building that church. But that is not the church. You are the church of the living God. As Brother Brown quoted today, you are the salt. When you go out there, the call of God is still reaching. There's people, they're like that king. They're dressed up. They got it all looking good on the outside, but inside, they've got sackcloth. You've got some bosses. You've got some coworkers. You've got people around you. You've got some neighbors that are terrified. Can I tell you, the call of God is reaching today. And God wants a people that will still be the church. I mentioned it a minute ago. I'm going to go back to it. We're going to have an altar call here in just a second. But I want you to imagine yourself back in that first century. After Jesus had died, been buried, rose again, the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost was poured out. In that post-apostolic age, but it's pre-Nicene, it's still oneness, one God. A plague hits the world. It's throughout all the world. The Roman Empire is wiped out. 25% of the Roman Empire died. They think it was a large contrib contribution, these plagues, to the fall of the Roman Empire. During that time, the church did not change its purpose. The call of God was still the same. Go teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, which we know today is the name of Jesus. That's the way the disciples, the apostles, the only way they ever baptized was in the name of Jesus. 
because neither is there salvation in any other. There is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And by the way, if you need to be baptized today, this would be a great day for you to have your sins washed away, the water's warm, and you can have your sins remitted today. But church, I'm done preaching, and I'm going to open this altar. I feel the Holy Ghost here. I feel the comforter. I feel the peace giver. I feel the strength giver. And I feel the presence of the God that sent us into this world. He's here today and he's saying, my call is still going forth. There's a price of running. There's a price of bailing. Is there anybody that will say, I want to be everything God wants me to be. I want to heed the call. If you're here today and you've never received the gift of the Holy Ghost, I'm just giving you an old-fashioned altar call. If you're here today and you have never repented of your sins, if you've never been baptized in Jesus' name, this altar is open for somebody today. If you're here today and you need healing in your body, can I preach faith to somebody? Jesus is still a healer. He still knows how to set you free. If you're here today and you are bound by addiction, if you're bound by habits, if you're bound, Jesus can set you free. Come on, there's a God in this place. I want every hand raised, every, every hand raised in this house. Come on, let's love the Lord right now. Hallelujah, as you come, lift your voice. Wherever you're at, lift your voice. Come on, I feel the call of God in this house. Hallelujah. 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 Anybody glad to be the church? Come on, reach out to him. Hallelujah. Jesus' name. Oh, every hand raised, every eye closed, every voice lifted to Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, God's going to lead you to hungry people. That's it. Come on, there's people that need you. You're the salt of the earth. You're a city set on a hill. Oh, oh, oh. oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it. Wherever you're at, come on, let the Holy Ghost touch you now. He's moving in this place. Oh, hallelujah. We'll follow, Lord. Call us. We'll answer. Is that how you feel today? I'm heeding the call, Lord. That's it, ma'am. Let Jesus touch you. That's it, sister. Let the Holy Ghost have its way. That's it, yes. Come on, the Holy Ghost is moving right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.
That's it. The Holy Ghost is still moving in this altar. Oh, that's it, ma'am, right where you're at as you're praying. Let the Holy Ghost have its way as you're praying. If he starts speaking through you in a language you don't know, don't be afraid of that. Just let it happen. The Bible says they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. Oh, 